we have seen a great deal of uh, political posturing and speeches over the last several days. Um, I think it's time that uh, we get our priorities straight and pass a clean budget that reopens this government. I think the American public is frankly sick and tired of the blame game. Uh, I also believe that many of my Republican friends are distracted with issues that are important but are not central to the question of funding government. We can debate the issue of the Affordable Health Care Act as we should, but it's not central to reopening government. Today I'd like to talk to you about two public servants from my neck of the woods, the San Joaquin Valley, who put their community first and delivered results. Sadly, in the last week, these two individuals have passed away, and we say goodbye to them. But I want to use their examples as role models because I think their commitment to public service to the people of the San Joaquin Valley in California and our nation are a good example. One was a Democrat, one was a Republican. Both were widely respected, and they never ever let partisanship or ideology get in the way of solutions. George Zinovich and Pete Mijas were the best our valley had to offer, especially uh, on how they conducted their lives. Pete Mijas, from a Greek immigrant family, was a pillar of an education community in the valley for almost 50 years. From the time he entered the classroom in 1963, he was bound for leadership and to change the lives of countless individuals. He realized the special challenges of students in our valley and throughout those throughout the state, and he made their voices heard. His passion was recognized by Governor George Duke Mason, who appointed him as chief advisor in education relating to all matters involving education. Pete served also under Governor Pete Wilson and Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger, and ultimately President George Bush when he was appointed to the Advisory Commission on Education of Excellence for All Americans. Knowing that strong schools require strong communities, Pete wanted to see Fresno prosper and develop into a thriving business hub. From the co-founding leadership from Fresno sitting on the Valley Business Conference, the Executive Board as the President, and also the Fresno County Athletic Hall of Fame, where he was enshrined, Pete invested his time for the community and the city he loved. For 16 years, he was served as the Superintendent of Fresno County Schools, where he represented 34 school districts, 325 schools, and almost 200,000 students. He was a loving husband, a proud father, and a distinguished alumni of Fresno State. He was part of the 1961 Mercy Bowl team that was a national champion. So the heavy heart that we say goodbye to this man who dedicated his life to making the future of others brighter. Another individual who he worked with and who I worked with was also a pillar of our community, and that was George Zinovich. George was a man who lived his life with purpose and dedication to public service. Born in 1922 from a Slavic family, he was a proud product. He served in the United States Army Air Force. He was student body president at Fresno State. And later on, he enrolled in law school after he married the love of his life, Kika. Upon completion of his degree, he quickly built a strong professional rep representation and served in the California Assembly beginning in 1962. Later on, he became the majority leader before taking a seat in the California State Senate. His impact as a senator was far-reaching, from creating the California Arts Council, the California Housing Authority Finance Agency, to authoring the first law in the United States that gave farm workers a chance to, co to collective bargaining through the Agriculture Labor Relations Board. He was an advocate for those voices who sometimes got lost in the political banter. In 1979, George uh, was appointed by Governor Jerry Brown to be on the Court of Appeals. In 2008, Fresno's new 5th District Court of Appeals building was named after him, the George Zinovich Court of Appeals building for his lifetime practice of fair and sound jurisprudence. George was a shining example of what a public service should be and never lost sight of those in the community he served. Both of these people put their community first I worked with both George and Pete for years, and they were not only my friends, but they were friends of the valley they loved and the state they called home, California. 
My colleagues, Mr. Speaker, I think it's time for all of us in this body to live up to the memory of these two shining examples, people who we have all worked with throughout our lives. And I think in the true tradition of public service, these are the kind of individuals we ought to be role models when fixing our nation's budget and putting government back to work.